My name is Federica, I'm part of the DOCCITY team, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all into this live presentation of EFH, University of Applied Sciences. Um, and it's my pleasure now to leave the floor to the Professor Joachim, who will be starting with the presentation. Don't forget to write all of the questions that you might have into the Q&A section that you find in the Zoom window, and we will be able to answer at the end of the presentation. Joachim, I'll leave you the floor. Thank you very much, Federica. I greatly appreciate and um, warmly thank you for your uh, introduction. And um, hello to everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and possibly good evening. Um, I'm very glad uh, for this opportunity and for meeting you in this virtual way. We are not a virtual university. We are a real university. Our name is not Innovative University, um, but uh, Federica um, attributes uh, the innovation character to us because probably we are innovative, but our name is PFH, Private University of Applied Sciences. And this is how you will also find that us on the internet. So why are we calling ourselves innovative? Because we are doing uh, many different teaching modes and research modes. We are adapting very quickly to changing circumstances such as the one um, in the COVID-19 um, period. And of course, we are innovative in terms of making students entrepreneurs and we are finding innovative ways to do this and we are going to explain you a bit on how that may work in our English taught master study programs. Um, I want to work you through um, this talk together with uh, Stefan Zamit, uh, whom you have also seen on one of those uh, pictures. He has his camera on. He is head of the International Office of PFH and also the program director of the um, English taught master programs. And my name is Joachim Ahrens. I'm a professor of international economics. And I have been working uh, with PFH now for 15 years and I still enjoy it very much, especially since we have started uh, with our international programs a couple of years ago, being happy to see every year new people, new young people, students from all over the world flowing on our campus. Now, we're going to walk you through this talk tonight um, in six uh, steps. Um, first of all, I introduce you to the university and I um, describe a little bit the student life and I start, ta um, start talking about one of the English taught programs, the management program. And then I hand over to Stefan, who will talk more about other programs in engineering, but also in management. And he will talk about working and living conditions in Germany. And of course, what's uh, of interest to most of you, to job perspectives in, in Germany. And then in the end, we, uh, all of us uh, share a Q&A session with you. Um, let's get started. Now, this university is for German standards quite an old private university. You may know that Germany has a very um, long tradition in academic education, but this is um, in uh, public universities, in pu private universities, only in the 1970s it all started in Germany. And uh, so the PFH is one of the most traditional or um, oldest private universities, now 55 uh, 25 years old. We are private and uh, uh, that means uh, we are privately organized and financed, but at the same time, we are a small university as part of a, of a huge educational organization uh, with uh, international outreach. We are belonging to Galileo Global Education Group, and that means that we can take advantage of a, a large group in the background helping us to organize and finance ourselves. And at the same time, we provide to students a very family oriented um, educational experience in very small 
groups of maybe 20 or 30 students only with an individual attention so that we know all our students by name on campus and that we can take care that individual students can achieve work on and achieve their own academic and professional objectives. This is um, what we can do and promise and we have a quality guarantee because we are fully accredited and state recognized so we need uh, to fulfill all the standards uh, which are uh, given to us uh, by the government of Germany and the government of Lower Saxony, the state we are located in. We do have uh, campus studies and distance learning programs, and sometimes we can also use distance learning online tools to build them into our campus studies, especially in the COVID-19 era. This has proved to be very effective, but we learn a lot and we learn quickly to adapt this also to a hybrid mode of teaching, which is always good for international students because you are traveling around the world and once in a while you are back home or you are doing an internship somewhere in the world and you need to connect to your to your university and we can easily do this online but of course we are even more happy if we see and meet you in person on our campus which you see on the right hand side it is being located in the middle of the of the city very close to the university campus so that we can share a lot of facilities and we're going to talk more about that a bit later um, the university is basically um, organized in uh, three or actually four departments. It's management and law. We talk about tonight. It's engineering, even uh, also mentioned tonight. It's a psychology department and it's a medical techni technology or medical techniques department, what we call orthobionics, a kind of connection or combination of um, sports, rehab, engineering, but also orthotics and prosthetics. Uh, but this is certainly not the topic for tonight. But if you have questions, please feel free to ask. Um, of course, uh, we do much more, not only teaching, we do a lot of research and we do um, intermediation of knowledge and capabilities from academia into the professional world. And this is what our centers for entrepreneurship and healthcare technology respectively are here for. They also come with, uh, with an incubator. That means we support startup businesses, um, maybe developed by our own students or by students or people and citizens um, uh, of the city or students from other universities. But we do see um, students from our school, and we have seen it for many years, um, who started their own business and they receive backup support, financial and organizational support from this Center for Entrepreneurship. And of course, from the expertise of professors and other instructors working at uh, PFH. Um, on the map, um, or in the map on the right hand side, you see Göttingen. This is the city we're in. It's right in the middle of the country. Um, and Stade, which is close to Hamburg, this is where our engineering programs are being offered. Um, this is because Airbus Industries is located there and we are very close and share even workshops uh, with them. Um, but the management studies, they are being uh, offered in Göttingen. Um, traditional university or college town, if you want, um, in the middle of the country. PFH is small, um, meaning we have right now um, slightly more than 30 full-time professors plus uh, for honorary professors, which uh, also work for and with students. In addition, there are more than 50 instructors or what we may call lecturers uh, coming to PFH or working for PFH full or part time. We have practitioners coming from the professional world, giving talks and holding seminars. We have a bit more than 600 students on campus. And as I said, uh, split up in these four departments. And for example, the management professors and instructors, they know all the campus, other campus campus students uh, by name. Um, roughly 15% in the management field, more than 50% of students are international. In the management field, we can certainly say 20 or 25% are international students. In addition, our online students uh, who are enrolled in distance learning programs, um, they um, 
account for 3,400 or even a bit more. Uh, but usually campus students do not have anything to do with, with online students. Uh, but of course, they can take advantage of some tools which we had developed for um, distance learning students, which we also make available for campus students. And this can be um, a huge help for campus students because that provides campus students with even more flexibility in working on and achieving their own objectives. Of course, it's possible to spend part of your studies in a master program, say a semester, or even longer if you go for a double degree uh, at one of the 44 partner universities worldwide, not only in Europe, but also in Asia, in uh, the Americas, um, and uh, possibly very soon also in some African countries. Um, we closely cooperate and coordinate our activities with partners from the professional world. And this is uh, 13 trustees. It's uh, the board of trustees, which also helped us to, um, to organize uh, up to five endowed chairs. And this is the board of trustees. It's a mix of industrial and service industries. It's a mix of small and medium sized, but also large companies. It's a mix of family owned companies, but also companies at the stock market. It's a mix of finance. It's a mix of uh, consumer electronics. It's a mix of uh, industry, telecommunication, software development and tourism. Uh, so uh, this is not the only companies we closely cooperate with, but this is those companies we have been cooperating very closely over the last 20 or even uh, 25 years with. So they are with us and they care. And uh, that does not mean that all our graduates work for those companies, but these companies actually uh, reflect what we are doing. They are uh, counseling and uh, they also help us developing new uh, study programs. But our students, either as interns or as graduates uh, for their first jobs, they may actually find a job with these companies, but they usually um, find uh, jobs all over Germany, all over Europe, sometimes all over the world. Um, from our international students, we can say so far that 100% uh, um, employment uh, or employability that all international students have found so far uh, a job either before graduation or not later than nine months after graduation. We are, uh, take some pride in, in saying this and the employability is certainly a USP in our school. And this is not only because academic education is, uh, is good and individually focused, um, but that um, our study programs, you will see it later and I will explain it uh, briefly in a few words, is very much practice oriented. So we closely cooperate with business and industry and um, we have developed certain uh, specializations with corporate partners in different branches of industries and we involve experts from these partners in teaching and giving talks to students every week, uh, usually at night, sometimes even during the day. We do have professors who are part-time professors, meaning that they work, that they have their own company or that they act as a manager and that 50% or 40% um, or 60% of their work is in the classroom as a professor. And um, we involve students in all study programs and project work and the final thesis which needs to be um, done by all students in all classes and in all programs can you don't have to but can be uh, done in cooperation with companies which very often is a key to find a job after graduation you don't have to do it but those who do it are very successful in doing this we have a placement and career service for mediation with companies. That does not mean that we serve jobs on the tray, on a silver tray to students, but that we support students in being um, as best prepared as they can for the job market interviews. And we give uh, tips and advice. And sometimes we can even open up uh, the door a little, uh, but of course students need to go through this door by themselves and then they have to kind of be convincing and uh, in, in, a, in a 
in a job market interview. We do have company presentations regularly on campus. We do have workshops with companies and career forums so that you can actually talk to professionals. You can also talk to alumni. That means graduates who now work for companies who come back um, to PFH to uh, give talks and also to report to students about their own experiences. And of course, our alumni, the graduates, um, they actually love it to talk to current students and also to help them in finding their way through business. Um, we invite international visiting professors and lecturers regularly uh, to campus so that you get also a flavor from um, the atmosphere and the educational experience which is being offered at other universities in other countries. Um, as said before, we pay individual attention um, to students and we do have innovative teaching methods. It's not only um, teaching in a classroom, it's workshops, it's uh, usually lectures, it's excursions, um, either to companies uh, in Germany or possibly to other places. Once in a while we do have China excursions for those who want. It's optional, of course. Um, we have flipped classrooms, uh, modes of teaching. We have a whole lot uh, which we can uh, do and we are very flexible in this because of a very excellent lecturer to student ratio of roughly one to 10. That means one lecturer professor comes on to 10 students. So we can speak to students individually or in very small classes. Lectures are very interactive. We do have additional tutorials and experimental and simulation games, um, case studies, and as I mentioned before, excursion seminars and workshops. We help students um, systematically to approach scientific academic work. Um, in, the, in, the, in, in the beginning, we instruct you how to do it. And in the end, you can do it independently. And uh, we feel that this is um, good because it gives student guidance and orientation, especially when it comes to writing academic papers. And this is something you have to do at any university in the world. And at PFH, we do have different forms of examination. It would be written exams, oral exams, group presentations. Um, it would be uh, also written academic essays. And this is very important because the very last uh, thing you do in your, in your uh, program is writing a thesis. And um, this is of utmost importance. And at, at the latest, at this stage, you should be able to do independent academic work. And this is what we provide training opportunities under the guidance and supervision of experienced professors and lecturers. Well, Göttingen is a city of 120,000 people with more than 30,000 students, um, a city which hosts three universities. We are the smallest, um, but we take pride in saying uh, at PFH, you study in a very personal manner with personal individual attention, taking advantage of a very, very small educational entity. And at the same time, you can take advantage of a city and a university with 30,000 students, uh, which provides you a lot of amenities, which you will be part of, because we cooperate closely with the University of Göttingen, the public university, so that our students can take advantage of a lot of services being offered by the Students' Union and the university itself. Göttingen has been, and possibly some of you have heard about the country, uh, the, the city before, um, has been and still is an academic, a truly academic city, which has brought up uh, or brought out actually 45 Nobel laureates. Uh, two of them still live in the city. Um, we have an excellent infrastructure uh, in terms of transportation, so you can um, come and go as quickly as you can. Göttingen is a small city, so you are not distracted in your attention from studying. But if you want to go away very quickly over the weekend, this is easy by train on the freeway, or even by flying out of Hanover or Frankfurt. And you are very quickly into Berlin, Munich, Hamburg, Paris, or even London if you wish to do so. Um, it's a research city with a lot of uh, um, internationally renowned uh, research and development institutes, including uh, Max Planck Institutes, the German Aerospace Center and German Primate Center. 
And we do host in Göttingen several leading, globally leading high tech companies, especially in measurement technologies, but also in bionic mobility and automotive supplies. Uh, all in all, it's a perfect gateway to biggest European cities and of course, all over Germany. The campus in Germany, well, you have access to all services of the student union. As I mentioned before, you're taking advantage of a big university you are not part of uh, while taking advantage of the small university you are enrolled in. Um, Germany, pro uh, Göttingen provides relatively cheap and high quality dorms, much more inexpensive than Hamburg, Munich, Cologne or Berlin, uh, not to compare London or Paris. They are regional trains free of charge. Um, there are vast uh, library facilities, one of Germany's largest, and you are part of it and you have access to all these facilities. You can actually eat um, at discounted prices at students' canteens, uh, students' restaurants and cafeterias. And if you want, you can have a virtual tour around PFH if you use this link, which is given below here. Um, PFH is a truly international university having connections all over the world, as I mentioned before. And here you see our outreach to partner universities in Asia and in the Americas and of course in Europe. Um, you can uh, go and um, spend a semester abroad, but you can also um, attend tailor-made educational programs, uh, but you can also, if you want, go for a double degree program. Uh, we have three double degree partners, uh, one in Australia, that would be Bond University at Gold Coast. Um, then our most popular partner in this respect is Catch Business School, a three-fold international accredited business school in Bordeaux in France. And you can also go to a Regents University in London. Uh, be assured that all these double degree programs um, make it possible that you can study in English. Although in France, you may actually order your glass of wine or your bottle of beer in French. Um, the study program is being taught in English. So um, to be on the safe side. Um, we provide three English taught programs we're talking about tonight. That would be a program in general management, which is very close to what I would call an MBA. Uh, it's composites. Uh, that would be an engineering program. Stefan will talk about later. And a user experience management design program, which is brand new. We just developed um, along the request of practitioners of companies and students and we will also present this to you. Uh, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial thinking is very, very important at PFH. Even if you do not go for your own startup, it's important for us that all our students are getting familiar with entrepreneurial thinking, with taking risks and taking decisions. This is what a manager needs to be able to do. And um, everything PFH does in education in teaching and research, but also in um, transmitting um, uh, entrepreneurial knowledge to the professional world. Uh, PFH has been ranked very high in national uh, rankings. And this is uh, what you can see here. We call it a Gründungsradar. It's a radar for uh, startup businesses. And this is what we are, uh, what's had been acknowledged by by um, many elite, uh, elite kind of, of institutions. And we have been and still are regularly um, recognized uh, for this. Um, now let's start with the study programs. And the first of the three study programs we talk about tonight would be the management, the general management program. Um, we uh, launched this diploma in business studies 25 years ago, and uh, we do not have to go through all these steps, but what's really important is uh, the general management program for international students. This comes with an employability rate of, I must say, 100% so far. Of course, there may be a person who is not uh, so successful, but so far, all our graduates achieved, um, achieved, um, 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 and, and, uh, or, or got a job very quickly after graduation and 99% because over the 25 years with a lot of German graduates, I think there were a very few, a handful of, of students 
who needed more time. We provide a job guarantee to, um, to our master graduates and the job guarantee means that we are confident to say that all students graduating successfully from PFH in the regular period of time and with a grade of good, that means in the German scale of 2.5 or better, and with a German proficiency of B2 level, um, will find a job not later than nine months after graduation. Very often we see that even before graduation, uh, students uh, get a job or jo job offer, or maybe even two. And we guarantee that you can do it. That means we are confident. And if not, then we reimburse you 20% of those tuition fees which you have paid to PFH. So uh, this is our promise and we stick to this. And um, we are confident to say that our education is that good that our students find uh, a, a job they like in Germany or elsewhere in your home country or possibly any other country on this globe. Um, you can actually uh, use a lot of flexibility in this program, in the management program. Um, you select three electives from those which are mentioned here, sales management, industrial management and logistics, but also a corporate financial management, business psychology, marketing, and also e-business. But in addition to this, you can have or enjoy even more flexibility because you are, um, you are requested to go what we call through practice projects. And that means you can actually develop your own profile in any industry, in any function, in any business function you like, even if you do not attend a course on the specific subject, if you do a practice project on this and you have a supervisor, you can develop your own individual profile so that it is exactly you who gets out of the program after 18 months. Um, and after having gained 90 so-called ECTS credit points. This management program is of course accredited as all our programs are, and we take uh, students in in April and in October. Um, this high degree of flexibility, which I mentioned before, also refers to the phases in which students are given the opportunity uh, for internships. If you want, you can actually spend up to eight or nine months out of these 18 months in the professional world, being part of a company as an intern, or possibly in a fixed term appointment, if you are a lucky one, uh, possibly getting a paid internship. And this is also an integral part of your study program. That means placements belong to the study course. And this is very important because it's you choosing your internship and your placement we are helping you in doing this. And that means you're combining your academic education with professional experience. And I guess this um, together with your own profile development makes you highly employable after 18 months. Um, down here, we even say that you can spend up to 10 months in practice. This is basically possible, but not recommendable because it's a bit tight in this case, uh, but uh, most students go for eight or nine months and that works very well for them. And they can actually break it down into um, two or possibly even three, but usually students do two different internships in this period of time. But you can also, if you want, have a semester abroad at one of our partners or do a double degree program. But the most important thing at this stage is because of the flexibility, each student can develop his or her individual profile, meaning you are signaling to the professional world who you are, what your strengths are, what your interests are, and where your experience lie in. Uh, the entry requirements and fees, well, you need a bachelor's degree of 210 ECTS. That may be actually a problem for some students, but uh, never mind. we are here to help. If you have uh, gained less than 210 uh, ECTS or an equivalent to this, then we are offering so-called bridging courses, or if needed, in case that you have a non-business bachelor's degree, you can also join our uh, management master program if you add a one semester 
uh, foundation. This can be done through distance learning, but you can also do it um, while you are in Germany, in Göttingen, making yourself familiar with the, uh, with the university, meeting fellow students and taking intensive German language courses. Uh, so that means that for those of you who are not business bachelors taking uh, or aiming at um, a business degree, you can do that as well, but then certainly this program will not be limited to three semesters, but four semesters, so it would not be 18 months, but 24 months. Um, the language requirements, of course, um, it's English taught, and that means you need to come up with a TOEFL IBT of 86 or an IELTS of 6.5. And we can talk about the fees now and also later if you have questions. The tuition fees are 4,800 euros per semester, and there's a one time examination and a one time admin and enrollment fee. Uh, so you can do the math, and we can also uh, talk about that later, also about funding and stipends. Um, for example, if you come with a GMAT score of 630 or more, then you get a substantial discount in tuition fees, um, but this can be discussed later on. So this would be it from my side. And now I hand over to Stefan, who will talk about the other two programs and some other aspects. Thank you very much until now. Yeah, thank you very much, Joachim. If you could stop sharing your screen, perfect. I will share mine. Absolutely. And meanwhile, I wanted to thank Joachim for the presentation and for all of you, I can see the more people joined. We are um, starting with our presentation, but please feel free to write all of your questions into the Q&A because after the presentation, there will be time to answer all of your questions. It's now my pleasure to leave the floor to Stefan, who will be talking about the other two master programs. Well, thank you very much, Frederica. Uh, um, and thank you as well also to you. Um, we have uh, another 30 minutes in total, so I'm going to try to uh, go through these uh, slides uh, as efficiently as, as possible. Um, I might leave out some details, and uh, if you want to have more information about that, uh, as Frederica has just pointed out, you will have the opportunity to do so at the end of this session, and we are always at your disposal for questions uh, in, in the follow-up uh, of, of this, this session. So you're always welcome to contact us directly. As uh, Joachim Arons mentioned uh, a few minutes earlier, um, this Masters in User Experience Management and Design is a very new program. Um, it will be starting in October this year, um, and it will be uh, in, in German in October, and then it will start also in the English version um, as of April uh, next year. So uh, in time for anybody who is looking towards uh, pursuing studies in Germany. And um, it, it was more, more or less a bit of a natural development because uh, PFH has expertise in three areas uh, which are essential to this uh, program. Uh, these three areas are business administration, psychology, uh, with a clear focus on business psychology, and also uh, business informatics. Um, and it was one of our professors in business informatics, uh, along with his colleagues in uh, business psychology, uh, who uh, realized the potential um, and then the need and, um, in the job market uh, for experts in this area. Uh, and it was basically the next uh, obvious step, uh, one of the programs that we would definitely want to add to our portfolio. So I mentioned we're starting in October and then respectively in April for the English taught um, program. Uh, it is uh, accredited, of course, uh, as uh, Joachim Arends mentioned earlier on, according to the legislation in Germany and in the state of Lower Saxony. It's a three semester full-time program, 18 months, hybrid uh, in the sense that uh, depending on the background of uh, the student's bachelor's degree, uh, they might, uh, they, they will have to take some uh, courses in other areas uh, in which they do not have the expertise. So for example, if someone has a bachelor's degree in psychology, then um, they uh, would take courses in business informatics and in management. If they have a degree in management in their bachelor's, then they would focus uh, on uh, business uh, psychology and on, on uh, business informatics. Uh, so. Uh, it's a very flexible program, and it is designed basically to, uh, to, to grant, to give, uh, to provide students uh, with the expertise that they require according to the latest industry requirements. So the focus is on theoretical, analytical, and conceptual design, 
uh, issues in the area of users, user-centered uh, digital uh, services, digital product and product development. Um, and uh, it's about creating uh, successful uh, products, uh, not only digital products, but products in, in general. The entry requirements are uh, similar to the management masters we went through earlier on. Um, it's a business uh, degree uh, in, uh, or an economics degree or commerce. Uh, psychology is also fine or business psychology, business informatics, and uh, the admission team would also be happy to consider other applicants. Um, it, it, it will be an individual uh, process, but uh, anybody who does not have uh, any of the degrees mentioned over here, but is still interested in the program is more than welcome to contact us and we will be more than glad to assess the eligibility. Uh, same uh, as before, we need 210 credits in the bachelor's program, uh, but it is very common to have 180 credits. Uh, so there's no issue over there. Anybody has 180 credit program, they are more than welcome to apply. And we will also make bridging courses available so that the gap can be easily closed. Uh, English obviously needs to be given. I, um, either an English taught bachelor's will do or TOEFL uh, or IELTS, um, the standard in this area of studies. Um, tuition fees are also uh, mentioned over here. Um, plus you also have all the information on the websites accordingly. What sort of areas are we looking at when it comes to implementation, uh, user experience, management and design? It's a little bit uh, complicated perhaps for those uh, who, who uh, do not have uh, this, this, this background, but it is a more or less a new area of, of implementation and it requires uh, interdisciplinary expertise. Um, and the areas of, um, of the professional profiles which we are looking at are very diverse. Uh, we have management on the one hand, we have marketing, which is a, a very clear focus. Uh, research could also be an area of application or a profile and also product uh, development. So any of the, the profiles that you see listed over here on, on this uh, page uh, would be uh, job vacancies that uh, you would be uh, looking at um, towards the end of uh, your uh, studies. This brings me to the third uh, English uh, taught master's program that uh, PFH uh, offers. Uh, we are planning to uh, uh, develop uh, new programs, but for the time being, these uh, three uh, are the ones that uh, you can definitely uh, count on. This one has been uh, offered now for many years very successfully as one of the pioneering programs in the area of lightweight engineering. We offer this in our other campus in the north of Germany, which is close to uh, Stade, close to Hamburg. The city is called Stade. And we are located uh, in our, with our campus in the so-called CFK Valley, the Composites Valley. And we are also part of a network uh, called Composites United. Now you might recognize some of the brands listed uh, on, on, this, on this page. This is, you see, you see also the, uh, the river, uh, the Elbe, uh, which uh, on the other side of the river is also Hamburg, the deep sea harbor. And these brands over here are manufacturers in composite technology, lightweight engineering, research institutes, uh, and so on. Um, one of our main partners here has been uh, Airbus, uh, and uh, we are located directly next to one of the production sites of uh, Airbus Industries. This is just to give you a bit of a closer picture of what our campus looks like from the outside. Of course, you're welcome to uh, find out more about that. We've been running this program now for 11 years. Um, we have we're actually one of the pioneers in the sense that uh, there were practically no universities offering this sort of technology back then. Uh, we have uh, kept our innovative approach uh, and are still one of the leading uh, higher education institutions in this area. Uh, we are known also for the practice-oriented uh, teaching, uh, which also includes uh, projects. Some of the projects uh, which uh, we carry out um, are very hands-on. Uh, you see uh, on the bottom right picture uh, a group of PFH students who traveled to the UK to participate in a, a competition, a lightweight uh, aircraft uh, competition. Uh, PFH has often uh, placed uh, second, even I think we managed to, be, uh, to come 
first in this particular competition in New York, um, uh, master students would also have the possibility to participate in such projects, uh, but it being a three semester program, uh, the, the, the such projects uh, are a little bit more difficult uh, to implement, especially when it is a little bit more long term based. Um, the implementation or the, the application of carbon fiber reinforced polymers it has been uh, picking up uh, over the years. You can see the development over here, the demand uh, for uh, composite material has uh, increased uh, fourfold in the last uh, 10 years. We have various areas of application. It is mainly the automotive industry which is using uh, this technology, but uh, especially also the aviation industry. Uh, but windcraft uh, is uh, an area of application. Sports and leisure is another. Um, even the, the, the new hy hydrogen uh, strategy, which is now being enforced here in Germany will benefit from this technology when it comes to the, the tanks uh, that re require strong resistance, uh, but lightweight at the same time. So the, the areas of application are becoming uh, more widespread um, as the technology becomes uh, more applicable. I apologize for this slide being in English, but uh, I, I think the, the picture says it all. We are talking about 197,000 tons uh, of uh, this material being uh, applied, being implemented in the areas that I have just mentioned by 2023. Our focus, our specialization is uh, in automotive engineering, crane construction, aircraft construction, but uh, the, the program itself is also very flexible with projects so the students can choose uh, the focus of so students wanting to choose, uh, wanting to focus on aviation, uh, can focus on aviation. Um, the, the applications are diverse and the, the structure allows for the students to choose their preferred area of uh, focus. The lightweight engineering masters itself is actually part of a triple award program. So the masters itself is a 60 ECTS program, which PFH has complemented with a management certificate program and a German language certificate program. Uh, why did PFH do that? Well, uh, the, the very often students interested in these programs are not only interested in the expertise itself, but would like to acquire work experience. They would like to do internships within the scope of their programs and stay on and gain further work experience after their studies. And one of the key elements, of course, is the German language, especially in, in, in the so-called Mittelstand, uh, the small and medium-sized enterprises in Germany, the export champions, the hidden champions of the German economy, uh, very often they export worldwide, but it is uh, all, always helpful to be able to communicate with uh, fellow German-speaking uh, colleagues. Uh, so that is why we thought it was important to complement this program also with German language uh, courses and management courses as well, because very often students with this technical background uh, end up working, for example, in, as, as a key account managers, so in sales departments, in product development, which require uh, management skills, such as project management, uh, sales management skills, uh, you know, learning how to deal with customers and so on. The master's is, of course, fully accredited and state recognized. It's a three semester program, 18 months which, as I mentioned, is very focused on practice-oriented teaching. The entry requirement is very much the same as the other program, with one, perhaps one, uh, one difference being that uh, students are required to have one year's work experience, uh, professional work experience in, in an engineering-related field. Um, and students should also have an above average uh, bachelor's degree, at least bachelor's degree in, in engineering or, or mathematics or other natural sciences. I'll skip the next uh, slide unless you have questions about that. Uh, we can always return to it. So where do students uh, studying this program uh, end up uh, working in? It's the aircraft industry, of course, it's shipbuilding, it's machine building, uh, as engineering consultants, uh, in research institutions, uh, but also in the automotive industry, railway, spacecraft, uh, and crafts enterprise in general. We're going to move on to one section now, which uh, I think might be of particular interest to you all. We talked about uh, how convenient it is to be living and studying in, in Germany. 
uh, especially in Göttingen. Uh, Göttingen is perhaps uh, from this point of view not to be compared with other large cities such as Munich, Berlin, or Hamburg, which tend to be uh, a little bit more expensive. So we're looking at a, a budget of around 800 euros for living expenses, which uh, should make it quite uh, livable uh, for, for students, especially if they make use of the services of the, the, the student works, the student dorms. Um, it is possible to work during your studies. Uh, there are in some of the programs that are compulsory internships, so you don't need a special work permit uh, to work. Uh, beyond compulsory internships, you can also work part-time or full-time, um, and also second, secondary student activities are allowed. So working during your studies is not really an issue. Um, after your studies, um, it, uh, it, it is uh, also uh, quite uh, advantageous. Uh, Germany's legislation uh, has it that you can stay in Germany for up to 18 months without uh, having to apply for a specific uh, work permit. You can be looking for work, you can be working. And after that, after these 18 months, if you have a job, then chances are very high that uh, you will be able to stay on either with a national uh, working permit or with an EU blue card um, that uh, we have uh, with many students who have uh, exactly this goal to come to Germany and also to stay on to gain work experience, to work for a few years here in Germany, and then perhaps return to their home country or go to another country or stay in Germany. I mentioned earlier, it's very helpful to be able to speak at least an intermediate level of German. So B2 is something that students should actually strive for. Uh, many companies have English as a corporate language, uh, but I mentioned the Mittelstand, the so-called uh, backbone of the German economy, the small and medium-sized enterprises. Germany, uh, English is definitely a, a main requirement, uh, but it does really help to speak German. It opens more doors and it makes it easier also for PFH to help its graduates, to help its students find the right internships and the right uh, jobs for them. The job perspectives in Germany, I mean, we're talking about uh, getting uh, or helping our students get the required qualification. So it's practice orientation, it's internationality, it's a corporate network uh, and personal development. And the combination of these four elements uh, is what makes our uh, students, our graduates employable. But of course, it's also the job market um, and the, the economic situation of Germany, which makes it particularly interesting for international prospective students. I uh, wanted to share with you a slide which um, I'm, perhaps you all know, but um, it's good sometimes to put numbers to uh, your, you know, to, to uh, your thoughts. Um, this gives you the, the, the age distribution of Germany. We are looking at, a, at an aging country. Um, by 2050, the average age in Germany will be around 50 uh, countries like uh, for example, India or other developing countries uh, have uh, average ages of between you know, 30 and 35. Um, so we have a large number of uh, people who are entering retirement age uh, in, in the following years. Um, and this is, of course, also affecting uh, the job market. We also have other factors. Um, you might be asking yourselves, uh, how has COVID affected uh, Germany? Um, I'd like to show you this slide over here, which shows the business confidence uh, index. Uh, the source over here is uh, the OECD. Uh, it shows how the business confidence uh, went down um, once after COVID uh, started. There was a trend even before COVID started, uh, but now we see that uh, the business confidence in Germany is actually higher than it was two years ago, two, three years ago. So um, we see business confidence uh, also in, in the future very positively. Uh, this also sh is shown in, in this slide over here, which shows us the employment uh, barometer uh, of the IFO Institute, a uh, very respected institute in Germany, which shows that now companies are seeking to uh, recruit uh, uh, employees once again after a dip in April, May uh, to, of last year when we had the the first uh, wave um, of the of this uh, horrendous virus. The last slide I would like to show you is at uh, least um, with regard to uh, the need of employees uh, in Germany. Is this one over here? I'm going to have to translate this because uh, it's it's in it's in uh, German, and uh, this statistic was uh, 
It was conducted by the Bertelsmann Stiftung. It's a, one of the largest foundations in Germany, also very respected. Um, and they calculated that Germany needs an average of 150,000 people coming from outside of Germany uh, to, in order to cover the demand on the job market. So in order for Germany to maintain its welfare state, in order for Germany to maintain its strength uh, in the world uh, economy, Germany needs an average of 150,000 uh, employees coming from abroad in order to take the jobs, to do the jobs, uh, which uh, German nationals uh, will increasingly not be able to do because they are retiring. Uh, COVID has made the situation worse because uh, in the first half of uh, last year and even in the second half, uh, we uh, witnessed uh, uh, issues with uh, visa issuing. Um, so this is something that we hope uh, now that the crisis has starting to take a, a positive uh, turn will get better, even in terms of student visas. Our students have uh, been uh, still coming. We've, we've been running our programs on, uh, on a very normal basis. Uh, even now on campus, we have some of our courses which are being taught uh, here on campus in hybrid form so that students can still attend classes from home. Um, but we do hope uh, for the economy in general that uh, uh, these visa issues will be uh, eliminated uh, um, as quickly as possible. So we've made it uh, with a little bit of a delay for which I apologize, but uh, we have now uh, the Q&A session where we will be very happy to answer your questions. Thank you. I really like to thank our speakers for the presentation. And I have to say that you actually anticipated some of the questions that we received with your presentation. But I think still it could be good to start to have a look at those questions together. In particular, there was a question that uh, was asking if for the general management program, work experience is required. And they're asking if there is some sort of concentration available, for example, they're asking about leadership or negotiation skills. Um, let, let me answer this because I answered it already uh, privately in, in, in a chat answer. So I want to say the same thing, what I have written before. Um, Actually, no, there's no work experience required, but it is strongly recommended because uh, work experience, if it is only a couple of months, possibly a year, is always helpful uh, for two reasons. First of all, um, you already know better what you really want, and so it's easier to develop your own professional and academic profile. Secondly, it's much easier to successfully apply for an internship if you have some work experience before. Um, so basically, um, we welcome students uh, with a work experience. If you don't have work experience, we strongly recommend that you gain some before you start the program. Um, once in a while, it is possible to be um, a working student. Um, it's not possible to work uh, part-time or full-time and make uh, your living out of this, uh, but it's certainly, uh, possible to work or to act as a working student next to your studies for 10 hours a week or so and uh, to make some extra money and to gain some extra um, to gain some extra experience. Um, leadership training and uh, a course on leadership but also actual leadership training is integral part of the uh, master program and that also holds for soft skills seminars including presentation, conflict resolution and negotiation skills and some others. Also um, when it comes to language training, uh, we offer language programs in many different languages, but especially in German, this is what we highly recommend. And I think this is also one of the next questions uh, which, which came up, right? Absolutely. So one of the other questions from Martina was actually about uh, the German. So if it's German is needed to find a job or students will be okay with English only. And they're actually asking if the school is offering some sort of preparatory courses. But in this case, the students is a little bit afraid that it will be hard to learn German. All right. Um, so we offer um, beginners and advanced courses in German. We offer intensive courses in German. We highly recommend to start 
uh, learning German before you go into the program. You don't have to, but it makes things easier, at least in A1 or A2 level, which is not too hard. Um, in fact, you do not need German to find a job, but it makes things much, much easier, as Stefan mentioned before. Um, you may be okay with English only, um, but it opens more doors, even if the corporate language is English, um, to speak with a porter, to speak with uh, people in the canteen. Um, everything is being easier if you speak a little bit of German. If you speak B2, that would be perfect. If you speak uh, B1 or A2, that would be acceptable. If it comes to our job guarantee, as I mentioned before, then you need to speak uh, B2 German in order to be eligible for the job guarantee. Um, but it's actually some students, some graduates do not um, have a command of German of, of B2. They are maybe at A2 or even A1 and still get a job, um, but it makes it things easier, but it's, it's not a must. Thank you. We have a question from Renato, and actually there was another question from an anonymous attendee. So they're asking us if there is some sort of um, scholarship offered. In this case, they are talking for the engineering master. So, for example, asking if, uh, I don't know, scoring a good GMAT score or it could be like any sort of excellence and thinking about GPA or any sort of scholarship that the institution is offering. I'll answer that. Um, so we, we PFH offers various various scholarships. Um, it's it's um, for example we're planning now also uh, we were planning it for last year but uh, COVID uh, basically made us change our plans. But we wanted to celebrate our 25th anniversary and came up with a scholarship program. We're doing it this year instead. Uh, we have the so-called uh, German Germany scholarship as well, Deutschland Stipendium. Uh, which which grants uh, students, I believe, it, uh, uh, um, a 300 euro scholarship per month for for around one year. Um, so there are uh, various various scholarships. Um, very often, these scholarships are however partial, and they're not enough to cover the the, the full tuition fees. So while it's possible, uh, as we mentioned earlier, to work part time and you know to 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 earn a little bit on the side to to make sure. Uh, that you have enough to get by. It's really important to make sure that uh, the financing is is stable. Um, you know, you really want to make sure as a student that you can focus entirely on your studies. And while it's good to check out what scholarship opportunities you have, and uh, we have a website dedicated to that as well. And uh, you are always welcome to contact us directly. In which case, we can also provide you with further information about that. It's really important, and that is why you are asking uh, Renato and, and, and the others uh, about, these, about these scholarship possibilities, because you want to make sure you can really focus on your studies. So this is, uh, this is uh, important, um, not to underestimate the difficulty of, you know, you're coming to Germany, you, you want to learn the language, the studies themselves are also uh, challenging, um, and, and the last thing you want is to have to, have, have to worry about financing. So um, important question. Uh, we do have scholarships, but uh, still, it's important that you have your uh, financing. Uh, um, that's true, and I agree fully. But let me let me add that, especially in the uh, management programs, we have made the experience that um, all students who go for their mandatory internships, um, that most students actually are able to get paid internships. Um, this is probably due to the fact that they are at master level, um, that they uh, study practice oriented, and that most of students have gained some sort of professional experience before or do have an education. And um, of course, you should not rely on this um, because um, you should be from the very beginning very relaxed in terms of your funding. So you should not worry. Um, but uh, more than uh, um, than expected, there are opportunities for paid internships. In fact, even in a situation with COVID-19, there is another question, are internships or any sort of laboratory work available at the moment? And the answer is yes. Um, it's maybe not as easy as it used to be in a regular in a normal world without a pandemic, but still our students, most of them, um, interestingly, 
um, the international students are very successful in finding internships um, right now and had been over the last year. And most of them had been even paid internships. Um, the COVID situation is uh, getting better by the day. Of course, you can never be sure. Right now in the UK, we see that numbers are down, but there, there is a a variant and uh, possibly there is, a, is an additional risk. We, not, uh, we are not sure, but vaccination rates go up by the day as well. So we are confident to say that we will have a regular semester as of October this year. And we already do, and this is what Stefan mentioned, uh, we already uh, do uh, our teaching on campus again in a hybrid form, meaning that students are free to decide whether they will attend classes on campus or whether they would like to uh, stream classes. So it's for their personal preference and their personal safety. They can actually take their own decision and they will not be at the disadvantage. Um, in fact, uh, PFH managed to offer all classes, all regularly uh, scheduled classes uh, during the uh, COVID-19 era, including all exams, meaning that there was no extension of study programs and that all students could achieve and can achieve their academic objectives in time. And uh, of course, this is normal in normal times, but even in such a situation as we face it right now, we are flexible enough to make students succeed. And this is actually what we live and work for every day. I might want to add perhaps what, um, two, two things. Um, what I always suggest is when you're doing your research, uh, have a look at websites uh, such as uh, platforms such as LinkedIn, or in Germany, uh, there is this other platform called Xing or, or, or Crossing, uh, X-I-N-G. If you have a look at these uh, platforms and you search for PFH, uh, graduates, um, you will you will see um, where where they're working, and uh, you will also find international graduates uh, who recently graduated who are working. And what we also do is we have a project uh, which we've called PFH Champions. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to share the link with you uh, yet, but uh, we share this link uh, with students who are in the final stages of the admission uh, process, and th th this gives also applicants the possibility to contact recent graduates directly um, without any, any, you know, any people in between, contact directly, get direct feedback from these graduates, ask them how it was. They will all tell you it was a challenge, uh, but those who have succeeded uh, ha have uh, also good tips to give. Um, you know, we're saying that they succeed in finding applications, but it doesn't mean that upon your first application, you're going to get to, you know, the internship. It's a, it's a process, right? And it's a process which uh, which we accompany you, uh, but it's you, it's you in the driver's seat. Uh, this is an anecdote Professor Hans always, always likes using. You are driving, you are the sitting in the car, you're driving, we're only giving you directions. Uh, but it's, but it's, it's you who decides uh, where you want to go. And it's us basically giving you uh, what, it what it takes to, to, to realize this potential. Thank you. I actually wanted to take the opportunity since we have the pleasure to have um, us with you. Um, you probably will have a look at thousands of applications and speak to lots of students. So I wanted to ask, um, what do you think are the um, characteristics that you look for in a student and what, what makes um, a successful application? I mean, you've been talking about job opportunities post graduation. So I believe it will be competitive also to get into the institution that offers so many opportunities. So any sort of advice that you feel like giving to someone who is uh, thinking about putting himself or herself into this process? Of course, um, as all universities, we love to have excellent students. But the question is, what makes an excellent student? Uh, grades are one thing. Of course, we look at grades. Um, but grades are only one side of the medal. Uh, what's much more important for us is personality. We would like to get students who know what they want. Uh, we would like to have students who are able to take initiative. We are looking for students who are motivated. We are looking at students who um, know uh, what their profile could be. Um, we would like to um, teach students 
who have uh, real interests and can actually um, convey their own ideas to us, even if uh, grades are not superb. It's uh, this would not an aspect uh, uh, which is is very important. So we look at the whole picture, and of course it's uh, it's an advantage to have some sort of uh, professional experience, but it's not a must. So if you can explain um, why you are who you are, and um, if we see. Um, if we see a future, if we see that you will succeed in our program, but also in the job market, uh, then we make you an offer. Um, I don't know. Yes, please, if you want to add anything. I just wanted to add also, perhaps to explain what sort of uh, university uh, PFH is. We interview every single applicant who fulfills the general admission requirements. So after the first check is made, before assessment, you know, if, the, if the general conditions are met, if the degree is recognized and so on and so forth, we invite students to an interview. We conduct an interview with two representatives, usually a member of the, the faculty and, or one of the program directors, because we want to get to know the applicant a little bit better, but just as importantly, we want to give applicants the possibility to get to know the university a little bit better. And for German applicants who are you know, here in Germany who can easily travel to, you know, to, to the city, to the university, you know, they spend a day over here, we do a bit of a university tour so they can see where they're gonna be spending the next couple of years of their lives. It's easier for international students. The decision is a lot more difficult. They're, they're investing more and, 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 and they're investing in something, you know, they do not have 100% uh, uh, certainty. You know, there's always that bit of risk. Am I, doing, am I doing the right thing? Am I taking the right decision? Am I choosing the right university? So the least that we can do is to offer this individual advice before the application. We offer info sessions, we offer webinars such as this, but more importantly, we offer this individual attention. So people can call us, they can, they can actually contact us, you know, and they, 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 there's not a chat bot uh, answering your questions, but it's, it's the people uh, who, who will be answering the questions and who will be conducting the interviews. So it's very individual and it's not thousands of, 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 of applicants. Uh, you know, we have 600 students on our campuses um, uh, and it's small groups. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, th th that's what PFH stands for. And I also like to take the opportunity to say that after this event, we will be actually sending you an email and you will have the opportunity to book a one-to-one -one session with the team. So as Stefan said, it would be a great opportunity for you to have a personalized info session just to find out more as each of you will have a different story, different background, uh, different goals. So I'm sure this would be a great opportunity. Uh, we still have time for another question. So we have Leonardo's asking us, uh, is Finnish uh, a degree in bioprocess and biotechnology engineering? And it's very much interested in the lightweight engineering master course. He's a little bit afraid this might get a little bit out of his area. Do you think he will have many difficulties in this case? Uh, it's, it's, it really depends on what uh, you want to go for, Leonardo. Um, what I would suggest is the following, because um, this, this is uh, composites and lightweight engineering is not my area of expertise. Both Joachim Arons and I are economists. Uh, and we, of course, we know the basics of this program, but I would simply suggest that we organize an information session with uh, one, of, uh, one of our professors for example, with Professor Unkenbold, uh, who is also vice president for uh, the technology, uh, for technological affairs. Um, he, he's an expert in, in, in lightweight te uh, uh, engineering technology. Um, or for example, with, uh, with Professor Degenhardt, who also uh, works for uh, Deutschland, uh, Deutsche Luftraumfahrt, the, basically the German equivalent of, of the NASA. Um, so it, I would suggest that uh, perhaps we organize uh, and, uh, meeting with them. Um, it really depends also on where you want to go. Yeah, I mean, if, if you want to focus in, uh, you know, in lightweight engineering, um, you know, bio, I don't know, I don't know where, you know, bio, when you talk about biotechnology, and I think about, for example, our orthobionics program, we have a, a program in orthobionics, which is a mix of biomechanics and, and, and orthopedic technology, a lot of the parts uh, in, 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 in the production of uh, the artificial limbs, you know, the, the arms and, 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 and prostheses basically um, are made of, of composite technology. So if, is this something you'd like to focus on? We are actually planning to launch a new master's program 
in in um, in sports and rehab engineering in English. We have we we've been offering it in German, but we're planning to now offer it in English soon. Perhaps that is going to be an interesting uh, master's program for you. But it will probably be available in April or, or October next year. So please feel free to contact us, Leonardo. Perfect. Thank you so much. So we're coming towards the end of our presentation. I really like to thank the, our speakers for the presentation and for their availability to answer all of the questions. I mainly wanted to ask you all for being connected and for all of your valuable questions. Just before um, saying bye for tonight, I just wanted to ask our speaker if there was anything else that they wanted to add. Of course, it's very hard to summarize and experience the university in an hour webinar. Uh, you did a great job of trying to, of course, presenting all the academic offerings, job opportunities and everything. Just wanted to ask if there was anything else that you wanted to add before closing our session tonight. Except that it's been a pleasure. Last piece of advice, do your homework well when you're deciding where to study and uh, make sure you find an institution that is prepared to give you what you want. Let me add, we would like to um, give all the information you need to make a proper decision. And it's always very, very important to do a well-informed decision before you go for your next uh, for your next uh, program, be it at PFH or any other place. And um, I thank um, Federica very much and Doc City for giving us this opportunity tonight, because it's so important to look right and left, forward and backward in order to find out what the best place and the best opportunity is for an individual. I wish you all the best in your search for your opportunities. And if we can be part of it or been, uh, be of help for you, please let us know. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So thank you all for attending. Thank you to our speakers for their presentation and their availability. As mentioned, we will be sharing with you some extra information via email over the next few days. And uh, we really look forward to seeing you soon at the next live presentation and uh, good luck for your future and for your choice. So thank you so much and have a great rest of the day. Thank you, bye. Take care, bye-bye. Bye.